Yeah. How did he take losing ISIS? And again, I'm sorry about that. How did he oh, take? Oh, he 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 moped. Did he? Yeah. Okay. He moped around and uh, for a while, and, and if you mentioned her name oh, for a while, it was like. Oh my God! Where is she? Yeah. Right. So, so the really good sit, Papa. So the going with that thread really quickly, yes. So one of the main things that I want to impart with you guys with this new puppy mm -hmm. is uh, handling her right. So you see how he just told me that initially when somebody would mention her name, he would start looking around for her. So this is what I often tell people, right? I actually call what I call the good word theory. What I mean by this is, so you know when Thor first came to me, mm -hmm. the first week and a half or so that he was with me, and I know I kept him a little bit longer, the first week or so that he, that, that he was with me, and this is what I do with all the dogs here, I don't force them or bully them mm -hmm. or give them any commands. In fact, what I do with them is I just kind of hang out with them like I'm trying to do with Thor now. Mm -hmm. And whenever I happen to see a behavior that I like, I acknowledge it by saying the word good, nodding my head, and whatever action they did. So if he puts his butt on the ground, I would nod my head and say good, S-I-T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, shh, good. So um, I would acknowledge it by doing, by doing that, yes? So one of the main things that we need to do with her is whenever you're hanging out with her, instead of telling her to do things, I would be ambivalent about her. I would ignore her completely. And the only time I'd actually look and pay attention to her is when she's doing something that you like. So for example, say she's running around really cute and she plops herself on the ground. Look at her and tell her, good down. Good sit. You see what I just did there? That's called the good word theory. Mm -hmm. He's very familiar with that. Yeah. Keep in mind that most people with a puppy oftentimes create a monster, especially the little ones, mm -hmm. <laughs> the little toy breeds. So see, the cute thing about this dog, he's adorable. The cute thing about this dog is that, he's so smart. he's a, yes ma'am, but he's a big dog in a small package. Mm -hmm. That's a small dog in a small package. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is small dogs tend to be little terrors. Mm -hmm. yeah? I got two little Maltese in there that were terrors. Yeah. Right? They're calm now, but they were little terrors. So, he's got more, he doesn't have like little dog syndrome a lot of times like these little dogs can. Mm -hmm. So, if every time, if she gets your attention, she gets you riled up when she grabs a pair of your socks and you start chasing her around the house, <laughs> it's a fun game for her. Yeah. We try to catch her to put her up, try That's to go the, after her. And you're she not fast enough. Up, I'm not no, fast enough. No, she's like so three flanking. When she realizes she can outrun you, you're not only teaching her that she's faster than you, you're teaching her that she can outsmart you because think about it. If the dog would manage to get past your grasp, she feels accomplished. It's like a puzzle that, she's, that you're not able to figure out. No different than giving a dog a bottle with a bunch of treats in it that's clogged up by a little peanut butter. They're like, mm -hmm. I'm, they'll be puzzling for hours on why that treat won't fall out. Mm -hmm. right? and, and when that treat does happen to fall out, they feel very intelligent. Right? Sounds like treats falling out now. So same thing with her. So again, guys, if the only time you're looking at her is when she's up to shenanigans, you're going to create a monster. So what I would argue, is that what I would say at rather, is I would let her hang out with you only when she can be supervised for now. Yeah. Okay? Now, make sure that you have the wherewithal to deal with her potentially being naughty because she's a baby. But listen guys, you see how this room is here? Sometimes I'll throw stuff all over the room. My house is messy right now. I've got two little Maltese in there that I need to make sure I'm picking socks up and stuff and running off with them because mm -hmm. I'll try to swallow them. Right? Yes, she loves your socks. I'm, I'm sure. Dogs, dogs are laundry, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the thing, right? So in a situation like this, yes, the first thing that I did with the boys that I would recommend you guys doing is setting her up for success. So putting her, uh, you know, picking everything up before you hang out with her, letting her hang out with you guys for maybe 30 minutes. And during that period, looking for situations to shine your light on her, so to speak. Listen, I'm a big believer um, and I think I might be the only trainer that's going to say this to you, yeah? but I'm a big believer that uh, looking at a dog is a form of praise. Okay. Moreover, I'm, I, you know, so I, I, I read about and I, and I watch a lot about like theoretical physics, physics, right? So a lot of times in that, uh, observation is key. Obser that's what quantum physics is. Observation creates something. So same thing with dogs, in my opinion, yeah? If that dog picks up a sock and you look at her, right? believe it or not, you're rewarding. So the way I would handle that is if she picks up a sock and it's a sock that I don't want to ha her to have, I'm going to walk over there to her without looking at her. And as I walk over there very nonchalantly, and when I get she near runs. her, yes ma'am, because you, 
inadvertently, potentially conditioned that way, okay. right? Maybe, right? So please don't take offense to it, that's what happened. So this is what I would do, and I was about to say that she's gonna run, right? So I would walk over there like this without looking at her, and when I get near, if she moves, I would go in the opposite direction. And then I'd probably go and pick up something else. Okay. Worst case scenario, you have to pick up something smelly like Vienna sausage or something. And go down and call Thor to give it to Thor. Mm -hmm. You know what she's gonna oh, do? Oh yeah, she's gonna run right in his mouth. She's gonna run right up to you. So see, no, doing- No, she'll run to him. Right, but she's yeah. running up to you. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Okay. Right? right? So we got to outsmart smart dogs. Because now doing that over and over is going to build, is going to stop the bolting from you. Not tomorrow, but it will okay. if you're consistent. So don't give chase. We're not fast enough to catch her, guys. I'm not either. <laughs> This room is barren for a reason, so I can catch a dog if I need to. You know what I mean? You imagine, I've been to your home, right? Your home yeah. is large, or it's nice. Man, can you imagine how easy it would be for that to open up? Yeah. You know and you have a doggy door, right? Right. For the love of God, dog, bo your yard is huge. Dog goes out there, good, good luck. Let me tell you guys something really quickly about dogs, yeah? So every little story and theory that I tell you guys can be applied to some type of training of the dog, yeah? So the, I have three acres. If a dog is loose here, I'm 100% confident I will catch that dog. They can all outrun me possibly, obviously. But this is the thing, yeah? If a dog knows that you're persistent and you're not going to give up and you're more stubborn than them, they will yield to you. Most wild animals will. So what I mean by this is, if a dog starts running from me, gets loose and runs from me, I start to make trek towards that dog and I move at a pace that I know I can maintain all day, which for me is kind of slow. You know what I mean? So it's not super fast. This is the thing. The dogs, because they oftentimes are only going to dart when they're a few feet from you, it doesn't really matter how fast I'm moving. The thing is, guys, if I start moving at a fast clip and five minutes later I can't maintain that speed, that dog feels empowered. Okay. Second win, third win. Oh my God. Yeah. So you're saying if you walk shorter, it's okay? Yes, ma'am. But walk at a pace that you know you can maintain. So like, for example, if you just have to catch the dog, right? right? Start going after the dog and go towards the dog in a pace that you can maintain all day. Mm -hmm. And when you get close to the dog, dog, dog dark, moves fast in one direction, just turn like, like, you guys ever seen Terminator 2? So you're just chasing, right? Just mm -hmm. chasing, turning, going their direction and chase. It, it might take an hour, it might take an hour and a half, less, but eventually that dog is gonna curl up and go like this, even in an open field when it gets tired out. It's gonna feel like the world's closing in on it. Mm -hmm. This happens with wild animals too, by the way. You can watch videos of people hunting deer this way. And they spend days tracking the deer, but yeah. you will tire an animal out and they will give up. Well, I do know when we're outside, and now she knows the word, let's go outside. Okay, perfect. You know? And because they know that that's when they go, they're both gonna go out and go to the bathroom. Okay. Or play. Perfect. So his is play. Okay. And I can tell him to go and he'll go out Perfect. and then if it's not what i want i'll tell him go on and i do this good and, and, and he goes out and he does his he's number really well by the way huh yeah, he's behaving really well sure. and so this one uh i let him out of the crates in the morning and i said let's go little the boy girl little girl okay. yeah and so they're in crates side by side good so is she keeping that crate clean yeah mm -hmm. great Perfect. and you don't have a puppy pad in there do you no Good. Good. And uh, but she wasn't really using it that much. It was when uh, when she was in that small crate, she wasn't using the pad because I think it, she didn't want. What do you mean by that? You, you don't we have had, a pad. We had we had no, not now. But at first. Oh no no don't do that. No, no I mean at, at first yeah. we did. We had okay. like a little one in the back, and then that, and she wouldn't soil it. Thank goodness she. She wouldn't soil it. She didn't like it in there with us. I Thank think uh, one night she did, and she okay. didn't like it. So what um, a blessing that is! So you guys were inadvertently sabotaging a blessing. Right? So now, <laughs> no we just, now we just throw right. towels in there for her to sleep on. Perfect. And listen, please, when you get home, check those towels as well to make sure there's no tinkle on them. If she is tinkling on those towels, you have to stop using the towels for now. Mm -hmm. But if she's able to keep, if she's responsible enough, potty wise with her bladder, to keep those towels clean, keep using the towels. Okay. okay, but don't put anything in there to encourage a dog to go potty in their crate. That's okay. generally now I'm not going to say there aren't times when you should maybe do that if there's no other option and you just have a super dirty dog. 
but you don't have a dirty dog on your hands, thank goodness. That was the biggest thing that I was gonna be worried about with your puppy, okay? So you don't have a dirty dog, so that, that's, that's the right thing to do. But again, let's not give in to chasing. Okay. Let's change what we're doing, okay? Now, habits. It takes about 21 days to form a habit with a dog. The biggest thing with training a dog, in my opinion, is becoming predictable, right? Mm -hmm. So the dog, again, dog grabs a sock, the moment you run away from the sock, the dog, you you call for and give him a, don't give her the Vienna sausage. You call for and give it to him, but kind of, the reason I'm saying Vienna sausage is you can hold most of it while he kind of like, exactly. while she runs up to him. Right, so, but you, but there has to be, listen, a Vienna, if you open up a can of Vienna sausage right now, I'll smell it from here. <laughs> and I might take it from you. I haven't had breakfast yet, right? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it's aromatic. It goes, okay. I mean, it, it will override her senses. Yeah. You see what okay. I mean? All right. So you get that, right? Pull that out and you give it to him and then while she runs up to him and then as soon as she runs up to him and then when she runs all the way up to you, she's probably will already dropped it. And then ignore her completely. Go and pick that item up. She would have already won. She will probably will have already dropped it on the way to you. The sock. The sock. Oh. Whatever naughty item she had. She forgot about it already. Yes, yeah, probably will dropped it. If she's still holding it when you get there, then grab her by the back, by, by the back of the neck, kind of or by the collar like her mm -hmm. mama would do. and. Take it out of her mouth. Oh, out of her mouth? Yeah. Again, the likelihood of that being the scenario, mm -hmm. you have a hardcore little dog with a police dog mentality, that's what she does. The likelihood of her not have dropped whatever naughty item she has on route to the item that she's now feverishly jealous of that he's getting, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's so slim. If she keeps that naughty item in her mouth, oh, let me know. Yeah, yeah, she she won't. She'll drop, she'll drop it. So like a police dog, like these dogs will do that, but they're they're bred to be working dogs because mm -hmm. they have a different temperament. Yeah, like, no, because I, mean? I know that if we give him attention, she's right there. There you go. And so do you see what I mean? Right. So look, if every time she runs off from you, you beam on him, she just stop running off from you. It'll <laughs> be like my problem with her <laughs> is that when she comes, like you want to go inside, she's like right there, and you reach down and touch her head, and she ducks away. From because generally speaking, dogs don't like to be touched on top of the head. And, and you might, may not remember this when I dropped them off. And I'm going to tell you guys again, specifically, it's not a good idea to pet a dog on top of the head. It's just like, I'm sure when your grandkids come over, you know, if you're rubbing them on top of the head like this, they're probably not thrilled. Yeah. You know, hey, buddy, you're really shooting up. How you feeling? Can you see a light, baby? You know, you're rubbing, yeah. messing up his hair, doing everything. Right? Like, same thing with a dog. She doesn't, to a no, dog. I try to do this for a chin. Yes, ma'am. She doesn't like it. Make her like it. And then if she doesn't, listen, what I would do is if you start trying to pet her under the chin and she doesn't let you, then ignore her. Well, I won't give you any attention. Because she, 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 she might think that you enjoy petting her more than she enjoys being pet. Mm. In which situation she'll start potentially manipulating you. I'm not saying that's exactly right. what it is. Right. But listen, su success here, honestly, it's gonna sound bad, but requires, the dog training in my opinion requires um, being very, I'm gonna say stingy for lack of a better term, with your attention mm -hmm. and affection. Right. So for example, like I was saying initially, she's hanging out with you. Make sure she has at least five different things to chew on. She and then he, and, okay, so name two of them for me, please. She has a rawhide and she has a, a little um, ragged toy that, uh, that's flat. That we have with us, you know. Okay, right. so I thought you were gonna nail it on the head. Right, so the rawhide is yes, man, that's a chew toy, awesome. But the other item is a play toy. Mm -hmm. A chew toy is specific, even if it's marked and labeled as a chew toy, if a chew toy is sold and it says indestructible, you're creating frustration. I'm not gonna say that toy isn't a good toy, but it would be a good play toy. Listen, dogs have a need to destroy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have he a has need. a play toy that's indestructible okay and that's, play toy. that's a play toy and, and sometimes i'm sure when they play with it sometimes you're like <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's frustrating so if all you give your dog are indestructible toys it's gonna find the drywall or something yeah it's gonna get to something that is destructible no the struggle with him is he won't give we'll go fix that so yeah. again guys so what you want to do with her is make sure she has five like rawhide a pig ear Chickens, oh. a, a pig's ear. Yeah, there's usually those two raw hides down. But see, but two raw hides down is like giving the kid two of the same movie. Two kids, no, okay. Here you go, here's two copies of Dumbo's. Okay, 
because they're mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. So yes, that's good. Put one up. Well, two. There's two dollars anyway. Yeah. Two. But yeah, no. She needs. They like might be between five. Them. So they need like a pig ear. It's like an eighty-nine cents item. Yeah. item. Pig ear, a cow tongue. Ooh, isn't that messy inside? No. Really? It yeah. doesn't like stain stuff. No, it won't. Right? Cow hooves. Uh, you know, maybe a little antler, a, a bully stick. Yeah. Okay. You know, like give her like, and then you're going to find that, especially if you pick things up beforehand so you don't have to get naughty with her, so she doesn't do anything naughty, you're building success. Okay. Right? And then I would say as she gets further along in training, then you can start trickling the economy, right? You can start throwing things down around, like maybe leaving a couple of socks out. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? That's yeah. what I do here. That's why it takes time. I don't just bombard it all at once. Yeah, but she's that got being a lot, said, lot of, uh, but look, yeah. so let's say you're hanging out with her and she has five chew toys and she has several play toys, mm -hmm. those indestructible ones. But she has destructible toys. Whenever she runs up to that toy, look at her and say, good, good, good. To an indestructible one? Well, to anyone, anyone. Any item of hers that belongs to her, that is appropriate for her, when she runs up to it, good, good, good. All the items that are his and hers are hers. There, there, and aren't for now, any, there aren't any of them that are just hers. Right. But let's move, I mean, she tries to <laughs> let's move reward her for all of them. But any doggy, let's just say dog toy, dog appropriate items, mm -hmm. she needs to be rewarded. So again, look, this is the truth, guys. If you're hanging out with a puppy and you ignore that puppy, this is why hanging out with a puppy in the yard is awesome. Because in the yard, if puppy goes potty, good potty, good potty. So again, let's say you're like, you know how people on social media on their phone, you know, mm -hmm. all the time, right? Let's say you're, yeah. and you're hanging out with puppy in the yard, that's an ideal way of training your dog because you can be like this, but the whole time you're doing this, you're kind of keeping tabs and whenever you see puppy go potty, good potty, good potty. You leave chew toys and play toys out and every puppy, every time puppy goes there's chew toy or it's play toy, you stop what you're doing, good, good, good. Okay. Puppy is winning, puppy is learning attention. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Okay. Now, conversely, puppies hanging out in your house okay. and you're messy, which is nothing wrong with being messy. I'm not judging. But you have things thrown about, puppies getting into everything. Mm -hmm. Now puppy is learning the fun game of, I'm gonna run for my owner. I'm gonna make them work. Oh yeah. my God, they're panting. Ooh, they're frustrated. Yeah. Hi, you, know, hi. you know like with children sometimes, how they just, they love like getting on one another's nerves sometimes. Yeah. You know, Your like, last nerve. yeah, don't touch me. I'm not touching you. Yeah. I'm not touching you. What are you going to do? I'm going to tell mom, no, you know, I'm not touching you. Yeah. You know, just some, it look, you're even smiling, huh? Because you know, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I even started feeling that frustration. Stop touching me, you know? But same thing with a dog. They love riling one another up. They love riling you up. Unbelievable. You no, know, they rile each other up. I'm they? sure. And they like it. Yeah. But a dog initially, like her, in my opinion, needs to feel like the only button they can press is the happy button. Okay. So, you know how I teach a dog that is bolting, how I start, let me say teaching, because this is how I start teaching a dog who bolts, right? The way I start teaching a dog who bolts to stop bolting is I start randomly walking up to the door, and whenever I make my way to the door, the moment the dog starts to follow me, I stop. It takes days and weeks. Mm -hmm. but that's what I do. So when a trainer tells you two weeks is enough to fix that bolting, that means they're gonna punish the snot out of that dog, right? I'm not gonna tell you, I won't punish your dog and I don't believe in punishing your dog for bolting. Okay. That's a life or death situation, guys. Yeah. I have some customers who you open the door and, and Richmond is right there. Yeah. This other bad habit is when you're playing with it and you won't let go of things. We, we, we can fix that as well. And look, the, the, the way to start making him let go on command mm -hmm. is by playing with him only when you're loaded with a biscuit or something. Oh, you can't okay. do that. No, so he, he'll eat the biscuit. <laughs> no, if it's okay. If he has something in his mouth and you show him the biscuit, he won't drop that to get the biscuit? Oh, yeah. There you go. So what you do is you show him the biscuit, and then when he lets it go, you tell him, good, drop it, or let go, whatever command you want to mm -hmm. use. So you say, the moment he drops it, say the word, wow, good, drop it. If he's that food motivated, and another thing I'm going to say with her is that you need to create wow moments. So remember how I was talking about being ambivalent, yes? You know, like, dog sits, good sit. Every time he's laid down, I tell him to get down. Look, if I stand up right now and I walk away and he doesn't, well, if he stood up. Here in a little bit, he's going to put his butt on the ground. The moment he puts his butt on the ground, I'm going to say, 
the kid, yes? Now, if I had a treat on me though, <laughs> the moment he puts his butt on the ground, I would say the word W-O-W, maybe put my hands up in the air, I would say, wow. And then immediately afterwards, I would give him the treat, and as I feed him the treat, I would say, good sit. Mm -hmm. These are called wow moments. So, if you show him, if you show him, a, uh, if you show him a treat and he drops the ball and you say, "Wow, good drop it," and then you feed him, good sit. That's called the wow moment. You will condition him to drop it very quickly. Okay. Just by doing that alone, guys, honestly, in 21 days, you can say, "Drop it," and he'll let it go. Okay. Now, here's the problem: he'll let it go, and if you give him a treat, it'll be harmony for a while. But the first time you say, "Drop it," you let it go, get down, and and you don't give him the treat, he might think, "Well, you know what." I'm not gonna forget that. And that's when you're technically, and he's four years old, technically it's okay to potentially punish him for not giving it to you because he knows better. Mm -hmm. See, right now we have to go under the assumption that he's gonna be offended, that he's ignorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, simple. Once he's 21 days of doing that, he's not ignorant. Yeah. Right? Getting, um, so let me give you guys the crudest example, right? And this, this, I'm gonna use this examples to illustrate how to condition both of them. But you have a dog that won't come to you at all, you put a 50 foot leash on him, put a collar that he can't slip out of him. I would use a training collar, right? But any collar would work, even a harness, and go to a field or go someplace where you can't get tangled up by trees. Say, come here. And then as soon as you say, come here, it starts pulling the dog towards you and like a maniac preys. Good, come here, even if the dog is fighting and bucking, but the whole time you're like, you're so handsome, you're naked, good, come here, good, come here. And you do that for 21 days and you do it, you know, maybe a few hours at a time. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, in 21 days, you cut that dog loose when you say, come here, that dog is more than likely gonna run towards you. Okay. And when the dog gets up to you, obviously you reward him with a piece of tree, a piece of bacon or something, mm -hmm. that dog's gonna come to you. Now, if you do that for 21 days, mm -hmm. Cut the dog loose and the dog dog doesn't come to you and you get the dog back and then the next time you do it you need to be ready to punish the dog for not coming to you what the appropriate punishment is varies from dog to dog is that's conditioning a behavior mm -hmm. so same thing showing him a tree he drops the ball wow good drop it and giving him the tree will condition that behavior that we can then change mm -hmm. right same thing look guys the bed, yes, he's very food motivated, right? <laughs> you can so, tell. <laughs> well, now I can. I don't know. At first, I just thought he was fluffy and beautiful. I was always so like, ah, he's a little chubby. Yeah. So, but look, maybe keep a couple of treats in your pocket. If that's not feasible a lot of times, then maybe get a little pile of treats and place them strategically around the house and out of the way areas. And when you're going to come to bed, instead of fighting with him, listen, this will resolve your problem too. Just not prevention will resolve an issue in time. That's time passing without an incident, probably resolved, can be resolved, mm -hmm. not generally speaking. Yeah? So when you go to bed, you know, show him a treat and just start like hovering it close to him. I wouldn't give him a command. See, I'm big to start off with making them feel like it's their idea. So when okay. you grab the tree, maybe sniff the tree or whatever, he's gonna be sleeping. And if he's really, really asleep, hover it past his nose. When he wakes up, just hover the tree. The moment he gets soft, say, wow, good, get off. Give it to him and hop into bed. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So like you're working against him. Okay. Then in 21 days, if you don't feel like using the tree, you can say get off, and then we'll go over how to punish him if he doesn't. Okay. But look, guys, if if using a tree makes this dog do anything in the whole wide world, then consider yourself blessed.